beautiful Zion that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. For thus saith Yahweh of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm Brother Jonas, and the title of this video is Paul's Epistles Are to the Israelites. Paul's epistles or letters, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, and 2 Thessalonians are to the Israelites and were written by Paul over a period of 14 years to seven churches scattered throughout Asia Minor, Greece, and Rome. These letters are not for everyone as the Christian church preaches. And I'll show you that at the beginning of every letter, when you see church or hear church, it is not talking about a building that anyone can go to like in modern times. It's not a group of people calling themselves something like Christians, Baptists, Catholics, Spiritualists, Lutheran, or any other unbiblical terminology. The word church in the Old Testament and Apocrypha was not used. Instead, congregation was used, and it primarily identified Israelites in the New Testament. It was changed to church with the translations, and it still was referring to Israelites. Keep these things in mind so you're not fooled in your understanding when you hear Christians talking about the church. Now, the timeline of Paul's ministry is about 14 years, and his letters are 1 Thessalonians, around 50 A.D., to the churches or congregations, 2 Thessalonians, 49 to 51 uh, A.D., to churches or congregations, Galatians, around 53 A.D., to churches or congregations, 1 Corinthians, 53 to 54 A.D. to churches or congregations. Philippians, 55 A.D. to churches or congregations. Philemon, around 55 A.D. that was to individuals. 2 Corinthians, 55 A.D. to 56 A.D. to churches or congregations. Romans, 57 A.D. to churches or congregations. Colossians, 62 A.D. to churches or congregations, Ephesians, 62 A.D. to churches or congregations, 1 Timothy, 62 to 64 A.D. that was to individuals, 2 Timothy, 62 to 64 A.D. that was to individuals, Titus also in 62 to 64 A.D. was to individuals. What you're going to see in every letter of Paul to the churches at the beginning of every letter is a salutation or greeting. That greeting will identify who Paul is talking to and you will see that it is the Israelites. Now, understand, there may be people around listening to Paul when he was preaching that are heathens or people of another nation. Paul can't do anything about that. Just like you might see today people of another nation on the street corners listening to Israelite brothers preaching to other Israelites today. So Paul made it clear to let you know who he was talking to at the beginning of his letters or who his letters are intended to reach. This is important because Christ knew in our time that Christianity was going to take his word and twist it. So Paul made it very clear who he was talking to. All you have to do is pay attention and you will see. We will start in order of the timeline we saw. First, let's set the baseline. Got to have a baseline. So we have an understanding of some important facts up front. Like who Christ came for. Let's look at Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahawashai. For he shall save his people from their sins. 
Okay, I mean, that's clear as day. Let's go to Acts 5, verse 30. The Most High of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And see, that was clear. So we know who Christ came for. That's a baseline. The next one is, who are the saints? Let's go to Psalms 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Only Israel made a covenant with the Most High by sacrifice. Okay, that baseline is set. Who are God's people or children? This is important so we can always get the context from what's being said in the letters. Let's go to Exodus 7, verse 16. And thou shalt say unto him, Yahweh, the Most High of the Hebrews, had sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness, and behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. So, we know that God's people or his children are the Israelites. The next one is who the laws belong to. We'll look at Romans 3 verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of the Most High. So unto the Israelites was given the word of the Most High, not the other nations. So now we know who the whole Bible belongs to. This is important for you to understand who Paul was speaking to. Now we have a couple of more we need to identify. Like, what is a church? It is a congregation or specifically or generally a family or crowd. H57 one, two. This would be the Israelites in the New Testament. What is a congregation? The act of bringing together or assembling, more generally an assembly or persons, and appropriately an assembly of persons met for the worship of the Most High and for religious instruction. This also would be the Israelites but in the Old Testament. Once we set this baseline, then it will help you see and know who Paul is addressing in his letters. We will start at the beginning of Paul's letters and address them one at a time. The first letter to the Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 1. Paul and Savannah's and Timotheus, unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in the Most High the Father, and in the Lord Yahweh Christ, grace be unto you, and peace from the Most High our Father, and the Lord Yahweh Christ. Unto the church, or Israelites, of the Thessalonians, which is in the Most High the Father, and from our Father, saying, the Most High our Father, shows ownership of a particular group of people, the children of the Most High. You have to be his children for him to be your father. Now, don't that make sense? Where in the Bible did the Most High call everybody else his children? That's a lie from Christianity. He didn't. He is only the father of Israel. Okay? The second letter to the Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 1. Paul and Savanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians in the Most High, our Father and the Lord Yahweh Christ. Paul said to the church or congregation of Israelites of the Thessalonians that are righteous and a part of the Most High, our Father, showing that they are family. 
2 Thessalonians 1 verse 2 Grace unto you and peace from the Most High our Father and the Lord Yahweh Shai Christ. Again showing that they are family because he says our Father. The letter to the Galatians. Galatians 1 verse 1 Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Yahweh Shai Christ and the Most High the Father, who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. All the brethren or family or people of Israel which are with me, these are Israelites, to the churches or congregations of Galatia. These are Israelites. Verse 3. Grace be to you and peace from the Most High the Father and from our Lord, Yahweh Shai Christ. Christ is only the Lord of the Israelites at this time because he hasn't taken the kingdoms of this world yet. So our Lord is showing that he is Lord over the Israelites at that time and no one else. Verse 4 who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of the Most High and our Father. We see here ownership again. Our sins, Israel is the nation that sinned against the Most High. Israel are the people that needed deliverance from this evil world and our wait is just about over. And our father refers to the father of the Israelites. And we were told by Christ to pray to our father that is in heaven in Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 and Luke 11 verse 2. Now, the first letter to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 1. Paul called to be an apostle of Yahweh Christ through the will of the Most High, and Sosthenes, our brother. Unto the church of the Most High, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Yahweh Shai, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Yahweh Shai Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. The church or the congregation of the Israelites of the Most High, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified. Israel are the only people sanctified or set aside for a holy purpose in Christ Yahweh Shai, called to be saints. Remember, only Israelites can be saints. Psalms 50 verse 5, we learned that in our baseline. And we are the only people the Most High called. He hasn't called any other nations. With all that in every place call upon the name of Yahweh Shai Christ, our Lord. We are scattered all over the world. And the only people that can call on the name of, Yah of Christ, our Lord, and be heard by the Most High. Now, other people from other nations, they can call on the name of, 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 of uh, Christ, but... He's not hearing them. He's only hearing his people. I don't care what you see on TV and in movies or what you hear from the Christian church. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 3. Grace be unto you and peace from the Most High, our Father, and from the Lord Yahweh Shai Christ. Grace and peace to you from the Most High, our Father. Our Father signifying family of Israel. I will give you an example of Paul making a difference between the northern kingdom Israelites that his letters are written to and the Gentile heathen people he is not talking to. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 5 verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. Paul said, It is reported to me all the time that there is fornication among you, fornication that is different from that of the Gentiles. 
These Gentiles are the heathen, the other nations, that it is okay to have his father's wife. This is what the Israelites was doing. Paul shows you that he wasn't going to the Gentiles of the nations, but to the Gentiles of northern kingdom Israel. Paul pointed out that the northern kingdom Israelites was doing wickedness, that the heathen was not doing, having sex with their father's wife. In this next example, you will see Paul saying that northern kingdom Israel was Gentiles and that took place back in Hosea chapter 1. The Most High cut off northern kingdom and they became Gentiles. Paul is now telling them that they were Gentiles. They are no longer Gentiles because Christ grafted them back in to the vine or olive tree. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. They were carried away unto those dumb idols back during the time of Hosea. Even as ye were led, they were led by those dumb idols back during the time of Hosea. You see, northern kingdom of Israel became Gentiles after going off into idolatry, but they were grafted back in, and it was prophesied back in Ezekiel. Look here. Ezekiel 37, verse 16. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick, and write upon it for Judah, and for the children of Israel his companions. Then take another stick, and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. So you have two sticks, one for Judah and one for Ephraim, which is northern kingdom Israel. Verse 17, And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thy hand. Now the Son of Man, which is Christ, joined the two sticks together again as one nation. This took place when Christ shed his blood. You see the joining of the two sticks in my logo. Now, I will show you other scriptures in Corinthians that proves Paul's letters are to his people, the Israelites. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, verse 1. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to the law before the unjust? and not before the saints. Paul said, None of you having an issue against another should go to the law or police or courts before the unjust. The unjust is the heathen or other nations. Verse 2, Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Hammer to the nail. The saints shall judge the world. Only Israelites are saints. The Gentiles Paul letters are addressing are Israelites. So we should be able to resolve our own issues without calling the police because we know how they may overreact and kill our people or give us a ridiculous prison sentence. Verse 3. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? We will judge angels, so we need to work on the little things now. Now, the next example that Paul's letters are to the Israelites should be very clear. Let's look. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Paul said all of our fathers were under the cloud. Only the Israelites were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Only the Israelites passed through the Red Sea. Verse 2. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea 
Only Israelites were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Verse 3. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? Only Israelites ate manna, and only Israelites partook of the word of the Most High. Verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Only the Israelites partook of these things, not the other nations. Paul's letters are to his people, the Israelites, and not everybody in the world. Now, the letter to the Philippians. Philippians 1, verse 1. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Yahawashai Christ, to all the saints in Christ Yahawashai, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. Grace be unto you, and peace from the Most High, our Father, and from the Lord Yahawashai Christ. You see, this is addressed to all the saints in Christ Yahawashai, which are at Philippi, and we know the saints are Israelites. Psalms 50 verse 5. We established that in our baseline. Y'all should be able to see that Paul was only sending these epistles or letters to the Israelites that were in those cities. So whatever is in those letters is to the Israelites and not to the heathen or other nations or non-Israelites that say they gave their lives to Christ. The second letter to the Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Yahweh Christ, by the will of the Most High, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of the Most High, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Grace be to you and peace from the Most High, our Father, and from the Lord Yahweh Christ to the church or people of the Most High, which is at Corinth, with all the saints. The saints are Israelites, which are in all Achaia. Grace and peace to you from the Most High, our Father, signifying family of Israel. The greetings are constant, and Paul greet his fellow brothers and sisters of Israel in these other countries and cities. Paul isn't greeting the heathen, or non-Israelite people. Now some of you that just don't want to say, okay, you're right, Brother Jonas. Here is some more evidence, proof of the truth, for you to swallow down. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of the Most High, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Paul said, if our earthly house of this tabernacle, meaning our bodies, were dissolved or destroyed, we have a building of the Most High, and house not made with hands. This is New Jerusalem, eternal in the heavens. We know that only Israelites will live in New Jerusalem. Let's see. Revelations 21, verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from the Most High out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This is the house not made with hands. Verse 12. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names were written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Twelve gates for the twelve tribes of Israel, with twelve angels guarding the twelve gates. So Paul is telling these to his people, the Israelites, that that house is for the Israelites, and the other nations would not live therein. Now let's go back to Second Corinthians 9, verse 1. For as touching the ministering to the saints... For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. Paul said, for as touching the ministering of the saints, 
So he's ministering only to the saints and not the other nations. He's telling you that with his own mouth, which are Israelites. It is overkill for me to write to you. That's what he is saying. I'm really going above and beyond having to write to you what I'm telling you. Now you will need to read the scriptures that come after this so you know the context. But this is in the proper context to identify that these are Israelites. Here in Romans, Paul has a very long salutation or greeting. So we will start at the relevant part that shows who he is addressing and talking to. You can read from verse 1 if you want to, starting at verse 6 of Paul's long salutation. Okay. The letters to Rome. Romans 1, verse 6. Among whom are ye also the called of Yahweh Christ? Israel are the called according to the purpose of the Most High. The Most High chose one group of people before the world was made. He predestined Israel. Romans 8, 28 through verse 30. And let's go to verse 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of the Most High, call to be saints. Grace to you and peace from the Most High, our Father, and the Lord Yahweh Shai Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of the Most High. The Most High said in Romans 9, 13, Jacob have I loved. But Esau have I hated. Israel is beloved of the Most High, not the other nations. Grace and peace from the Most High, our Father. The phrase our Father is signifying family. Additional proof of the truth. Romans 9 verse 3. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Paul said he wished that he was accursed from Christ for his brethren, his kinsmen, according to the flesh. This is talking about Paul's people and not the nations. He tells us exactly who they are. Verse 4, Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, in the service of the Most High, in the promises. They are Israelites, and the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of the Most High, and the promises only pertain to them, and not the other nations. Verse 5. Whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, the Most High blessed forever. Amen. Paul said, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. Christ came for the Israelites, as we heard earlier. And as you can see in many other scriptures in the Bible, that's clear. Romans 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to the Most High for Israel is that they might be saved. Paul is telling us his heart's desire. What is Paul's heart's desire? My heart's desire and prayer to the Most High for Israel, for Israel, is that they might be saved, not the Gentiles of the world. He's not praying for or hoping for the other nations to be saved. Y'all got to see this. Now, let's go to the letter to the Colossians. Colossians 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Yahweh Christ by the will of the Most High, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from the Most High, our Father, and the Lord Yahweh Christ to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. The saints are Israelites. Grace and peace from the Most High, our Father, the Father of the Israelites. The letter to the Ephesians. Ephesians 1, verse 1. 
Paul, an apostle of Yahweh Christ by the will of the Most High, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Yahweh Paul is talking to the saints or Israelites which are at Ephesus, not the heathen that are there, and to the faithful in Christ Yahweh which are northern kingdom Israelites, and some southern kingdom Jews that are living there. They are the saints. Verse 2. Grace be to you and peace from the Most High, our Father, and from the Lord Yahweh Christ. Once again, grace and peace from our Father, the Heavenly Father of Israel, and not the nations, heathen, or anybody that say they gave their life to Christ. One last example. Ephesians 2, verse 1. And ye hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Only the Israelites were dead in trespasses and sins. We were cut off and broken off because we sinned against the Most High, breaking the covenant, not the nations. Their time will come, but not before ours, not before the Most High's family is set in place over them. We will be reigning and ruling when their time begins, when they will have an opportunity to then pay for a lot of things that they have done throughout history and learn the true word of the Most High. And they will have to honor us, pray to us, and look up to us. The letters to Philemon, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus are to individuals and not a city or congregation. You should easily be able to see that Paul's epistles or letters to the churches or congregations in Rome, Galatia, Corinth, Ephesus, Philippi, Colossae, and Thessalonica are to the Israelites only. And when you read what Paul says in those books, you should know he is talking to his fellow brothers and sisters of Israel and not the heathen. If you can see that, and understand that, then you'll begin to understand Paul and the New Testament better. The bottom line, folks, is that our enemies have in their possession our word, the Bible, that they stole hundreds of years ago and have twisted it into something that is not true and that is Christianity. Christianity don't want to recognize you as the true Israelites, as the true children of God, and that's fine. It won't stop our train. But you should recognize them for the devils they are, or deceivers they are, and have no part in them and their coming destruction. Don't be deceived by the witchcraft or mind trick of Christianity and the ministers of that created spiritual pit that wants you to believe that Christ came for everybody that gives their life to him or believe in him. He only came for you, Israel, his brothers and sisters, his army, the people of his family, the chosen ones, those that the Most High gave him. Now, one last taste of the proof of truth. Second Ezra 6, verse 53. Upon the sixth day thou gavest commandment unto the earth, that before thee it should bring forth beasts, cattle and creeping things and after these Adam also whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures of him come we all and the people also whom thou hast chosen two groups of people in the world everybody in the world and the chosen people Israel verse 55 all this have I spoken before thee O Lord because thou madest the world for our sakes. The Most High made this world for Israel. The Most High made this world for Israel. The Most High said it, not me. I'm just repeating what he said. Verse 56. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle. 
and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, this is all the nations in the world, except Israel. The Most High said, they are nothing. The Most High said, they are nothing. Nothing. But be like spittle, the Most High said. The nations are like spit to him, and has compared the abundance of all the nations to a drop of water, it fall from a vessel. And no one cares about a drop of water that falls out of their vessel. We look at it and keep on moving. Verse 57. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have become to be lords over us and to devour us. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathens or nations of the world which have always been reputed as nothing, have become to be lords over us and to devour us. Ezra is concerned because these nations, which are like spit and are nothing in the eyes of the Most High, are ruling over us and destroying us. Sounds like present day also, don't it? Verse 58. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten and thy fervent lover are given into their hands. But we Israel, thy people whom you have called your firstborn, your only begotten and your fervent lover are given into their hands. The Most High, Christ and Paul are about us, the Israelites. Paul did not create anything new or different from what Christ preached. He is right in line, right in step with Christ. You just have to be able to see it. Remember, Peter said, Paul is hard to be understood. But you should be getting better at understanding Paul. If you are watching my videos and studying. I hope this lesson has helped you to see that Paul's letters are to you. And for you, Israel, peace to all the saints of the Most High, which are Israelites. Tick tock.